Folks, crude oil has simply been on fire. In fact, lifting the energy sector along the way, way in front of the pack among its S&P 500 sector, uh, 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 other sectors. My next guest, he called this oil rally, uh, which is happening in part to draconian actions by the Biden administration. Now, some, of course, would say that's delicious irony. But what's next for fossil fuel investments? It's more professional investors begin to shun them. I'm going to bring back David Bonson of the Bonson Group, which, by the way, was just named by Forbes as the top private wealth advisor in Southern California. David, congratulations, number one. Number two, uh, I keep reading about these ESG folks uh, with trillions of dollars saying they're not going to touch oil no matter what the dynamics are. I look at a longer-term chart. You're running into some resistance. It's up nicely today in part because of the weather situation. But can it keep going from here? Yeah, I'm not sure how much higher crude oil goes in the short term, but I fear it could go a lot higher. And when I say fear, it's because the whole thing that commodity prices trade off of is supply and demand. And you had such a low expectation for demand in the COVID moment, and then supply had to come so far down. And now as demand picks back up, people forget you can't flick a switch and get all the supply back on. Our rig count here in the U.S. went from 675 to 175. We've got it back up to about 250, 270, but it is a process. And so what that means is prices have to go higher to push incentives up. And in the meantime, you have the draconian actions that the Biden administration is taking. And all these things are doing is making it a more delicious investment. That's the thing I don't think these ESG people understand is that they're working against themselves. Uh, you know, uh, it's, I guess it's all part of the woke moment, but I'm shocked at how many of these uh, large, large investors have said they're not going to touch it. Let's talk about the uh, banks for a moment, because I saw where the Fed now, the next stress test, I guess there's a partner we're going to assume a 55 percent pullback in the market. Now, there are two things I've got to ask you. Uh, does the Fed know something we don't know? And, and will the banks pass this next test? Yes, they will. And remember, they've been doing these stress tests all the way since March of 2009. And it's funny, people used to accuse them of rigging the test to be too easy to pass. And really, the whole time, what they were doing was just limiting the flow of capital in the country. I think the tests are far too strict. It's fine for them to get all the analytics they want. But setting some of the capital ratios they've set has actually limited the ability of banks to lend money into an economy where there has been organic loan demand. Charles, the whole thing comes down to not the supply of money. And this is what the Fed does not understand. But they, in their defense, they don't have a choice. The only thing they can control is the supply of money, the cost of capital. What it comes down to is demand for money. Is, uh, is right. there enough organic right. growth opportunity in the economy that businesses are looking to borrow money to invest into the future? We have capital formation. Now we need business investment. We need capital expenditures. We saw some of that happening in 2017. We saw it happening in 2019. It took a little break in between around the trade war. But ultimately, I don't think that the Fed is on the right path to think that just by creating more money, you're going to create more demand. We need organic business activity that's going to drive economic growth. All right, David. Well, thank you. Listen, I enjoy our conversations always. And and, and congratulations again. That is one heck of a feat, my man. Thank you, Charles. I appreciate that.